we adapt well. You know, that's one thing that the Army will teach you, adapt and overcome. This is First to Strike, the podcast of the United States Army Baton Rouge Recruiting Battalion. This is Season 1, Episode 6, Army Life. You can have a life in the Army. Staff Sergeant Elizabeth Hand and Staff Sergeant Christopher Hand are husband and wife, and both soldiers. We wanted to get into it about what it's really like serving in the Army. To answer that question, Staff Sergeant Elizabeth Hand and Staff Sergeant Christopher Hand give some pretty straight answers about friends, day-to-day in the Army, what it's like having a family while serving. And actually, that's where we start. How many kids do you have? Oh, we have one, one little girl. How old is she? She's about to turn six in May. So. Is she in school? She's in kindergarten, oh, yes. Fun. First year, she loves it, so that's great. I'm very happy to have her. Um, One of the things you said, being a dual military, it kind of helps, I think, not when you're being a spouse, you can kind of understand, I can kind of understand where he's coming from a little bit more, because we're going, we have the same leadership, and we're going through the same thing. So having someone that's also in the military, he can kind of relate to what I'm going through. And we also are able to use each other as morale. We also bounce ideas off of each other and how to become better leaders and what to do with certain soldiers or how we can better help them. So I think it's great having someone that I can just talk to whenever I want. How long have you each been in the military? We've both been in, we just hit nine years. And did you all get married before you were in the military? No, we actually met in AIT. We have the same job. So AIT is our job training. It's you go to basic training, then your job training. We're prison guards, 31 Echoes. And that's where we met. We got coincidentally stationed together at Fort Leavenworth. You know, we started seeing each other and hanging out. We ended up getting married within about a year's time from joining the Army, actually. I kind of planned that out right. You know, my, my Army birthday is in February, so... The following year, I got married in February, you know. Oh, convenient. You, you scheduled the anniversaries to be the same so you wouldn't have to. You only have to remember one date. Yeah, just three weeks apart, you know, <laughs> three weeks apart. We actually usually only celebrate um, our anniversary, kind of tie it all into one, have a great weekend. We usually bring our daughter and do some family fun stuff. So we just put it all together. That's right. Have a great weekend. <laughs> and it's uh, it, you can also remember easily, like, how many years you've been married and how many years you've been in the Army. <laughs> Absolutely. Nine years Army, uh, eight years married. Yeah, you know, we just uh, the only thing I, I regret is I did do it too close to uh, to Valentine's Day. That's oh. Valentine's Day is now a Hallmark holiday. So, um, so one thing you know, I'm wondering too. When I spoke to Lieutenant Commander Salisbury, he was talking about how when you're a recruiter, you're not only making a relationship with the potential recruits, but you're also making a relationship with the family. Would you say that the Army? is still having a relationship with your family now that you're you're already in you've been serving for a long time how does the army regard families um i think family is the top priority with the army Um, wherever we go it's always family first and i think this command and past commands have proven that if there's anything if our child has an emergency it's always we always are able to work around it and take care of her. They have family days that we're able to bring our, all our children to and just relax and have fun. When you're closer to a post, like most soldiers will be, there's so many family activities on the weekends that the post brings in. They have daycare, water parks, libraries, everything that you would see on the outside, but it's more of a tight-knit community, and I think that the Army and spouses, everyone comes together and helps um, have a support system for the families. So I, I really like that about the Army. Why do you think that families are come first with the Army? Well, the Army the army is a family. We, we all look at each other like brothers and sisters, and, and that's what you're taught from day one. So it would be kind of hypocritical if you know, your actual blood family wasn't regarded in, in no no way when that's kind of the motto of the Army. So, you know, and like she was saying, the closer you are to a post, like right now we're on recruiting duty, so it's a little different. But when we're outside of Leavenworth, Kansas, that's where my job is usually usually based out of. You know, daycare is open earlier. Uh, they know it's a lot of shift work going on around there. I mean, the community also absorbs that and, and helps out. So, it's uh, a lot of people are scared about joining the army for, you know, oh, I have a family. I don't want to leave my baby. Well, you know, if you pick a combat job and you want to deploy and stuff like that, then then you, sh- you know, that's what you're going to be doing. That's what you should expect to do. We have a, a non-combat role. We're prison guards. We've been in eight years been, or nine years, been married eight years, and we've never been stationed apart or anything like that. We have a 
married armies couples program. We can't be stationed within X amount of miles from each other, uh, unless it's a deployment, of course. But, you know, we've always been stationed right there, lived together the whole time we've been married. Um, daughters never had to deal with separation other than maybe, you know, a training school for a, a month or two or something like that. But as far as duty stations for two, three years, that's, we travel together. And it's just, that's just the army way, I guess. Um, so back to the idea of, of camaraderie, but how is that encouraged? And do, do you find that re- potential recruits are afraid maybe that they won't fit in? How does that go? Uh, I, I definitely think that's a fear that a lot of people have, uh, especially like where we're recruiting is smaller towns and things like that. And, you know, when I joined, I met people from all walks of life and, and I didn't really know. I grew up in an area similar to this back home in Florida and, and I was a little more diverse. I worked a, a state prison before I joined, so I, I met all kinds of different people and things. But uh, I think that is a fear people have. But one thing, no matter what, you're going to have something in common. You're both serving your country. You're both, you know, doing something bigger than yourself. And that takes a special type of person. So people with those types of mindset tend to bond well anyways. Um, for instance, I mean, I day one me and the recruiter i work with hit it off just and we are nothing alike he's more of the video games and comic books and stuff and i'm your jock you know but we do a whole lot of things together i come over here to her office and other recruiters here you know we enjoy fishing and things like that so it's just you're gonna find things in common you're gonna find it's the same types of people it's just maybe they're from a different area and what about you? I, I noticed you are a lady. So were you afraid of fitting in or what were some of your thoughts coming in? Um, I was definitely nervous because there is, like you said, not as many females in the Army. The, well, there's a little bit more now. But when I came in, I was a prison guard. So it's kind of a low female um, job to have. But I have made quite a few lifelong friends. I'll, the ones I came in for my advanced individual training, most of them are out now. But I still keep in touch with them all the time. We're very close knit. Even with the families here, he was talking about the recruiter he works with. His wife and I are really good friends, and our kids play together, and it's just kind of that camaraderie that we have. Um, she spends the night at our house. She, our daughters play, go to their house, everything. So it, even if you don't have a female that's around, because in this office I don't have any, you, you're valued just like another soldier. No one it makes you feel like, oh, well, she's a girl or she, he's a guy. They're separate. No, we all come together as a team. So I've never felt out of place just because I'm a girl. So. Someone described to me Army, the serving in the Army as being a structured life and that that is not always a great fit for everybody. Can you describe what that structure is and maybe a little bit about like what is the actual day-to-day life like when you're serving in the military? Well, it's definitely structured. Um, typically, you're going to start your physical fitness training at 6.30. 6.30 to 7.30 is going to be um, working out. And then from 7.30 to 9, you're going to go get your food, wash up, whatever you need to do. And then from 9 to usually 1700 or 5 o'clock, you're going to be working. And you usually get an hour of lunch, but you're going to be working whatever you need to be doing. It's all planned out. Every job has a planner. You can find it in the company, and it'll tell you what everyone's doing every day. And then typically after 5 or 6, then you're going to be off with your family. Um, every now and then you'll have details that you may need to do, but you'll know about them. But it is very structured. And I, I kind of like it because when I came in, I was 21, and I just – didn't really have too much structure. I didn't know what direction I was going. So now I know, all right, 30, 6.30, 7.30, we work out and then we go about our day. I think it definitely sets you up and helps you mature a lot in life. And if you stay in the Army, that's great. But if you decide to leave after your first contract, I think it definitely helps you um, transfer into a career in the civilian sector as well. So you definitely gain discipline, whether you love the Army or you decided it just wasn't for you, you'll walk away with leadership and discipline skills i don't know many civilian jobs where you i've worked civilian jobs i didn't join in high school like you know it's part, my only regret about joining the army is i didn't do it sooner you know um but I, I did i worked like i said state of florida corrections i worked uh grocery stores i worked construction um all within three years time and not one of those jobs could i just not show up not one of those jobs could i just do whatever i wanted to do when i wanted to do it you know i had a schedule i had criteria I had to do. So I'm a prison guard in the army. I was a prison guard for the state and I do the same thing for both those jobs. Um, 
we still had to maintain ourselves and, and be in somewhat decent shape. We didn't have PT standards the way we do in the Army, but it was the same job. Had to be in shape or, you, you know, it, it's, a, it's in a prison, right. you know. <laughs> so uh, essentially it was the same thing without some of the leadership stuff. You know, I, I do have to do more leadership stuff and take care of people and things like that. But, you know, that's what I get paid to do. Let's talk about leadership. Both of you have mentioned leadership here while we're talking. Do most people have some sort of leadership capacity in whatever job they have in the Army? I think so. Whether you come in as a private, you may have your battle or your, I think they're warrior companions now to your left or right. Um, They may look up to you if they're weak, whether they're weak in PT or marksmanship or their job, they may not know their job very well. I think anyone can step up and be a leader to some capacity. Um, So you could be an E1 private or you could be the Sergeant Major of the Army. Everyone in between has some sort of leadership that they're able to offer to somebody. For me, it's always just been a part of who I am. You know, I grew up playing sports and things like that, and I always excelled fairly fairly fast in them. So I was always one of those guys that were kind of looked up to in sports. So to me, like, the Army was just a big, big football game, you know, and I'm in the – I'm about pushing halftime right now, you know. <laughs> and it's – you know, it is what it is. I, I don't know. It's just how I – that's how I know life. That's how I live life anyway. So to me, I don't see any difference, but you don't have to be a leader to join the army, but you will learn to become a leader. Um, in basic training and in AIT, you're going to be put in situations, hey, they're going to pretend, hey, so-and-so just broke his ankle. He's out. You know, Take this guy, get him out of training, pretend he's not here. Now you're in charge. And you're like, well, what? I've been doing this for a week. you know. And you're going to mess it up. And that's okay because you're in training and that's what it's for. But you're there, you're learning, and you're like, holy cow, this could happen, you know? Whether you're a, a combat training job or something, you know, I, I walk the tiers and I could fall down a flight of stairs or something. Someone needs to come do my job. It, it could be the most simplest thing. That's what that's what they train you from day one. So it's to me, it's just the way the Army works, and it's, it's very efficient. Uh, so wait a minute. You're telling me plan A doesn't always work out perfectly? <laughs> Uh, plan B doesn't always work out perfectly. <laughs> so, yeah, no, you uh, you definitely want to have a route, an alternate route to pretty much anything you approach in life, I think. I want to go back. So we, you already covered how that you're, you know, you both are in the military, so you, you don't have the same kind of role where you one of you would be a military spouse not serving in the Army. Can you tell us a little bit about how the Army treats spouses who aren't serving, maybe like some of the support that they offer? Well, when you're even out in recruiting, they do offer support. Um, I know a little bit more when you're closer to on post. They do have FRG, which is the Family Readiness Group, which each company and battalion have. Um, That way, information that the soldiers may not always pass on to their spouses gets passed on to them. Things like information about deployments, if it's available to give to them. Um, They have potlucks. They have fundraisers. They also have... Anything that they need, they have, if you need medical, if you need to just go talk to somebody. They also have marriage retreats put on by chaplain. I know that our battalion has them, and then every post I've been to, it's always been sent out for marriage retreats. Um, Even if you're not married, but you want to go on a retreat and better yourself, they have the BOSS program, Better Opportunities for Single Soldiers. So you just have to step out and look, because all of the opportunities are out there for spouses. Boss is pretty much um, what they probably mean maybe once a month. It just depends. Um, And they put on fundraisers. They raise money. Sometimes we had a friend that was in there, and he got to go on a cruise. They just It's just kind of a group of single soldiers that um, go out and help the community. So even if you're not married, there is something available for the single person. Absolutely. There's always something available. There's always somewhere to fit in, so you're not just sitting in your room. You get to go out and meet people and do some fun things. Yeah, that that boss program really is great. Um, when we were in Korea, there were concerts that put on and trips for hang gliding, and I mean there were some really cool things going on. Uh, like she said, our our friend Ryan, he, you know, stood on the side. We were in Kansas. He stood on the sidelines of Chiefs games as security, volunteering, and the money that you know the security guards would have got paid went to the boss program and paid for a cruise for a whole bunch of single soldiers. They probably came out of pocket maybe a couple hundred dollars, and that was it for a week long trip that they didn't have to use, you know, their vacation days or anything. It was all part of the program. So it was, it was a really, really great program. I like it. Plus, then if you meet somebody on the boss, you know, the boss program, you never know. And you can go on those married couples retreats. <laughs> we transition you to both of those things. Yes. <laughs> That's great. 
Um, so, you know, now that you're working within the recruiting wing of the army and that you're talking to people who are considering serving in the military, what, what are some of the things you see? What are some of the most common questions that you get? The, probably the most common questions we get is, are our jobs guaranteed? We are we guarantee your job based on your ASVAB score, and people really want to know that. If you score well on the ASVAB, more jobs open up. Our minimum score is 31, so the higher you get away from 31, then potentially more jobs will open up for you, and we do guarantee those. It's not an open contract like some other branches do. It is guaranteed in the office, and as long as you join within the seven-day time frame, then that job is locked in for you. It can't be changed. As long as you pass your basic training and then your advanced individual training, it's yours to keep. Shout out to March to Success if you want help to do better on your ASVAB. Oh, for sure. That's been a great tool for us to use. Um, We've seen scores jump up quite a bit using March to Success. If people actually take the time and go through the whole program of where they need help, then it definitely is helping people pass and get the job that they want. I've actually had quite a few people want infantry, which kind of surprised me. I've put in a couple infantry people that um, cooks have been kind of popular. And then computer type jobs. Um, Intel and computer have probably the third. Um, those are a little harder to get. That's why they I haven't put as many in, but a lot of people want those types of jobs. I definitely have that talk with people that ch- want to choose infantry or a job that's just in the Army. I do let them know. If they're planning on staying a long time, it's great. If not, they, are they sure that's what they want to do? I don't I want to make sure that they have a plan for their life and after the Army. So we want to make sure that they have a plan to be successful in life. But typically they want to do infantry, they want to go to school, and then they want to get out and pursue whatever career they want to do. I've heard that before about like that your part of your job is to help them kind of craft like what does the rest of your life look like? How do you how do you approach that? Uh, I, I don't know if maybe it's just experience or what, but t- to me it's it's really easy. I mean, we, you know, what's your plan, right? And then they, they tell me an idea usually never really fulfilled with a plan. You know, oh, I want to go to school and become a doctor. Well, that's not a plan. You know, that's that's an idea. That's a that's a career that you would like to get into. You have no idea how to do that. What school? How are you going to pay for it? Um, what what classes do you need to take? Is there anything you could be taking now in high school? You're going into your senior year. You know, these are things that I don't know if you know. We call them influencers, but parents or guardians or family members, friends. Those are probably the questions I should be asking them because. A lot of these guys have a job they want to do and have no clue how to achieve that job. Um, and the, the doctor thing, I mean, I get a lot of people wanting to do medical, uh, which is very hard to qualify for, but the job field is huge. So if you're you know, above average on the, on the ASVAB, we could probably get you something in that field. And all you got to do is take the test, take the ASVAB, go to basic training, um, go to your job training, and then you're going to be fully qualified in those fields. You know, yeah, you won't be a doctor right off the bat at 18 years old, of course, but I could get you an EMT type job within six months out of high school, you know, going to your AIT within about six months. So, you know, it's just, once you actually talk to these, these guys or, and girls, they, a lot of them don't actually have plans. So, I've, I've had a couple that were like, you got it figured out, man. You got your school paid for. You got this. You know, do you want to serve your country at this point? Because maybe it's not always the best option. 99% of the time, you know, it is. But, you know, some people really do have it figured out. And, and those guys and girls, they, good for them. But majority of the population, I know I didn't at 18, 17, 18 years old. Not even close. So to me, dissecting their, their plans and helping them figure out okay, uh, you want to be one of these three-letter agencies, FBI, something like that, right? Um, what's going to be the best way to do that? And they have no clue. They have never even hopped on a big Google machine, you know? It's, it's all right there at your fingertips, and they don't know the requirements. So, you know, multiple years of military experience and things like this, it helps that, not to mention all the schooling you're going to get paid for. So you can get your degree and military experience. Uh, we're in the MP Corps. You don't have to be an MP, but that helps, you know? So sure, I mean... Probably if I would buckle down and get my degree, it's all free. I'm just sitting there. If I'd buckle down and do it, I could probably walk right into something like that. But, you know, I, I know I'm probably doing this for the next 11 years. So, uh, I know some 40-year-olds who don't have a plan. <laughs> yeah. 
Yeah, that's 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 accurate. I got a bunch of them in my family, actually. <laughs> that was my motivation to figure one out. <laughs> you you decided to go the what not to do route. Right. You, you learn from everybody. That's what one thing they always teach in the army. You learn from. You're going to have some really great leaders, and then you'll have some that just aren't aren't quite there, right? But you're going to learn from them as well. You're going to learn what not to do. You're going to learn, you know, hey, don't just tell someone to do this. Do that thing yourself and show them you still can do it, uh, whether it's PT or just something job-related, whatever it may be. So you learn from everybody you encounter, or you should anyways. The, the opportunities are endless. And like I said, you know, uh, me and my wife have been in the same exact time. She's got way more college than me. But I'm way higher on Fortnite. So, you know, it just depends. You know, it's what you're into. You know, I didn't even own a PlayStation until I joined the Army, you know, or Xbox. Now I've had both. Um, it's just, I don't know. You know, it's one of those things everybody, you got to mold with the new age, I guess. You know, and uh, that's how I wind down. Interesting. <laughs> Interesting. Any comments? No. <laughs> <laughs> Okay, so a question for both of you. Uh, what are the best parts of serving in the Army, and what are the what we would call the not-so-best parts? So to me, the, the best parts are some of the, the friends and family. I've created a family. You know, I, I've found my wife. I have a, a beautiful baby. I mean, I my life is well beyond what it was when I joined as a wild and reckless 21-year-old Florida boy, you know. Um, I've got friends that have still in the military, still, you know, I've gotten out by now. And I mean, we've, I communicate, we play fantasy football, we do all kinds of things from all across. I got friends in Germany right now, friends in Hawaii and Germany. And we were all in the same fantasy football league this year. You know, I mean, just because we move on, we stay in touch, especially today with social media and things like that. It's just too easy. So those are the the best parts, you know, the friends, the family, the relationships, the experience. But you know, the bad part is, I grew up in a very beautiful part of Florida. So, yeah, you do have to move around. Some people look forward to that traveling. I have lived in a travel destination, so I don't know, you know. But to me, you know, yeah, I miss home sometimes. You know, I miss the, the location and, and things like that. But uh, that's why we took recruiting duty, to try to get as close as we could to that area. And, you know, I tell you, I tear up some redfish down here, so I'm okay with Louisiana. <laughs> I definitely agree with the best thing, but another great thing, I think now that I've gotten a little bit older and I do have a family, um, the be- one of the best things for me is that our daughter is always taken care of medically wise. Anytime that she's a little bit sick or I, I don't know what's wrong with her because I don't know, and WebMD always tells me she's dying, so um, I can take her anytime to an ER or to the doctor whenever I want to, and that that that's a big reason that I've stayed in the army is that it can it takes care of our family because family is the biggest thing to me so as long as family comes first in the army I'll stay in as long as it as long as I need to and I love it um he had mentioned that he gets to play with his friends that are all over the world probably the hardest thing is moving away from them Um, because you do create a close-knit family in that area we were like he said in Kansas for seven years so we were around those people all the time, but now it was time to venture out and make new friends and things like that. But we still do get to communicate with them. But it was a little bit hard leaving, but that's probably the hardest part. Uh, do you ever find that there's something that rec- potential recruits should be asking you that they're not? I think the biggest thing that people should be asking that they're not is a lot of them don't, I guess they don't know how to do research on jobs you know, and that's fine. We have a ton of jobs and things like that, but they never really seem to ask about the job, which is to me crazy because that's the biggest perk of the army over other branches is we have the guaranteed jobs. I mean, I cannot put you in the army without a job title next to your name, you know, and that gets overlooked a lot of times. To me, you should be asking, hey, what can I do? And the answer I'm going to tell you is take the ASVAB and I'll let you know because once you take the ASVAB, all your scores generate into this big long paper and I can decipher that and tell you what jobs you qualify. I can give you an entire list of every job you qualify for. The only other thing that has to happen is availability. If it's available and you qualify, it's yours and it's that easy. Um, So I think that'd be the biggest thing. A lot of guys come in and just think, you know, I want to do infantry. First thing I'm going to do is try to talk you out of that because if I can talk you out of that, then that's not the right job for you. You know, when I walked in and found out I could be a prison guard, there was no you could offer me anything else with whatever bonus. didn't matter. That's what I wanted to do. I already did it. I know I loved it. You know, why would I do anything else? So if I could talk you out of a combat job, then you probably shouldn't be in that role, you know. Now, if you come in here and say, no, I'm doing that or I'm walking, 
okay, I mean, I get it. You know, that's what you want to do. No, I'm not going to pry, but I definitely think job selections and, you know, what the job really means. The Army puts a lot of weird titles on some jobs and things like that. So, oh, this sounds cool, but let's can we watch some videos. Can we, you know, really decipher what this job means and, and how to do it? You know, I, I think that's the biggest thing for me. I definitely agree with him just to elaborate a little bit more on that. Since we have been in the Army for a little bit, um, we do know a lot of people in a lot of different jobs. Um, like you said, we can show you the videos. We have friends that are officers, warrant officers, enlisted, medical, intelligence. We can contact them if you want a firsthand experience of what you're actually going to be doing. Um, if the video is a little vague or you're not understanding part of it, we can get you in contact with somebody that is actually doing that job um, 99% of the time. We know we all have contacts around here and know people that are willing to, even if it's on the phone, if they're, um, we have a friend in Alabama or Washington State, things like that, they're usually typically willing to sit down for a couple minutes and let them know what a realistic type, what to expect in that job. So you're, you're saying like a, a real person can talk to a potential recruit and say, like, here's what it's really like, giving them the straight scoop, everything. At least in the field, it may not be the exact job to the T because some of them are very small jobs, but they've more or less worked with those type of people and can give them a firsthand experience if that's what they're looking for. That's actually, uh, actually, one of my best friends in the world from high school um, is shout out to Warren Officer Navarro in Bagram right now. You know, he he told me, hey, man, you know, I put me on Facebook or something and we'll chat, you know, I'll talk to him. You know, he was aviation for years and they switched over to warrant officer. He's like, I'll talk to him right now, you know, no problem. Wow. And this guy's in Bagram, you know. And so, you know, I, I don't know. People are always willing to help each other out. So we we work together. Uh, I think that's a good point. Uh, is there one thing that you would want people who are hearing this to know about serving in the Army, Army life? I, I would say that it's not as bad as the movies make it out to be. It's actually a great community. You, it's a very tight-knit community. People know what you're going through, whether you're serving or whether you're a spouse or um, you were brought up in the Army community. Um, it's not all infantry all the time, deployment after deployment. We are um, a family. Um, like you said, we've never deployed because we are in a non-combat role. We just have never come up on a deployment, but it's not like the movies. We are real people. We typically work nine to five with some exceptions and go home to our families. Um, I've had people ask me, do I walk around in this uniform all the time, 24 seven? No, I take it off. And most people don't recognize me when I go to Walmart. So we're normal people. And, but it's a great community to fit into. Yeah. My, most of the friends and things I hang out with in this area aren't you know, aren't soldiers, you know, we, we all recruit in different areas. So we live in different areas. I got a neighbor on one side that's 43 and another neighbor that's 23. And we get together every weekend and neither one of them's ever served or anything like that. You know, it's just, you know, just normal guys, you know, normal guys and girls. And we have barbecues and bonfires and do whatever it is that people do in that area. We adapt well, you know, that's one thing that the army will teach you adapt and overcome. So they put us in Kansas, I went from Florida sunshine to, you know, pushing snow. And it was no big deal because that's just what had to be done. And now I'm back down in the south and loving it. But we just adapt to our situations. And I don't know, we, we just seem to excel. So what'd you think? Programs for singles, marrieds, benefits, guaranteed jobs, family, and friends? Did this episode raise any questions for you? You know, you can always speak to a recruiter of your own by calling 1-888-550-ARMY. That's 1-888-550-2769. Don't forget about GoArmy.com, the website that has everything that's anything Army. March 2 Success got a shout out on the show. That's March, the number two success, march2success.com. And of course, I'll put links to both of those websites in the show notes for this podcast episode. This podcast is available on Apple Podcasts through iTunes, Spotify, Stitcher, SoundCloud, any podcast app. Just search First to Strike. You can find us anywhere on social media by using the hashtag First to Strike. We'd love for you to come find us there. 
Thank you so much for listening. We hope you enjoyed this week's episode. Thanks for listening. We'll see you next time on First to Strike.